How's it going guys? What I wanted to do in this video is actually show you all a new pistol that I got plus I also wanted to take this as an opportunity to talk with you all about 1911 break-in uh, and how your magazines can affect your firearm and I'm just going to do a demonstration using this gun. Of course this is a TSOS 1911 that I recently picked up and we're just going to open the box. I have already had this out of the box uh, But I just thought I would show you all some of the stuff that you get of course you get a package that has a cleaning rod a brush and the book as well as your ATF garbage so uh, Let's get to the good stuff and that is right here This is the TSOS 1911. This is of course a uh, commander size, compact size, whatever. It's the shorter. It's got the standard length grip with the shorter barrel and slide. So first thing we'll do, safety check. You can see there you just get one magazine with this particular gun. But this gun, you can see it does not have the full length guide rod. It does have the original uh, GI button there basically to where you know you can take this down with your hand very easily we don't need any tools safety on it is fairly positive it comes with three dot sights as you can see there uh, the safety is also ambidextrous and this particular model is all stainless uh, the lock up on this there is no if you can hear you don't hear any rattling there it is very, very solid. This is a very tight pistol. Uh, you know, it is very solid. And that is one of the things that I want to talk about. Whenever you get a 1911, uh, there is what is known as a break-in round count. Uh, you know, typically most manufacturers will recommend at least 500 rounds through a 1911 before uh, you would want to rely on them. Basically, you know, that's when you're going to get a lot of your malfunctions is early on. So, what I wanted to do is to take the one single Metgar mag that comes with this gun and actually demonstrate something to you all. And that's another thing. Some people do not like Metgar mags. Uh, I personally do. They're a pretty good magazine in my opinion. I have got several, but I'm going to show you why some people do not like them. So, these are some Remington jacketed hollow points. And that's what we have here. And also have some full metal jackets just for demonstration purposes also. So, and I just want to remind you all, we are in a very safe location. This is exactly where I teach my classes. Uh, and we are, uh, you know, this is a very, very safe location. Just trust me on this, guys. If you knew where uh, that I am, uh, if you knew, if you've ever been to one of my classes, you will know that what we're doing here is completely safe down here uh, at in my classroom basically it's also you know right beside my range I'm just gonna load this magazine up with these hollow points and show you exactly something that uh, I, that will identify exactly why you want to have a break-in period with your gun okay here we are we are fully loaded, eight rounds in this Metgar mag for my T-Sauce 1911. Safe direction, insert the magazine. I am going to try to chamber a jacket and hollow point. Pull the action back, let it go. And you can see here what we have is a malfunction. This gun has not been fired. This is a brand new gun. But uh, there's a lot of people that would be very critical of this okay there's a lot of people that will be very critical of the magazine when I show you something else very shortly okay what we're gonna do now is we are going to make sure we're safe direction lock that back and of course strip the magazine out make sure that we don't have any kind of hang up in there that is with the Metgar mag I'm going to take another one of my 1911s of course my Rock Island I have a Cobra mag from Trip Research here. Just to show you that we are safe, you can see nothing in chamber. The magazine is out. 
So we will lay that aside for a moment. This Cobra mag has the exact same ammunition in it. Okay, it is the Remington jacketed hollow points. I'm going to take this Cobra mag, insert it into the T sauce, and now I'm going to slingshot it. And you can see this time it did chamber a round. I do have it on safe. I immediately chambered it to uh, safe. I have it and I'm keeping it in a safe direction. Okay. You see with the Metgar mag, we had a problem. With the Cobra mag, we did not. It chambered it, no problem whatsoever. Let's go ahead and drop that back out and continue. Drop that round. Okay, now, we are clear. I'm going to take this round, I'm going to put it back into this magazine, and I'm going to set this magazine here. Let's take the Metgar mag and try it in one of my 1911s that has been broken in. Insert the magazine, safe direction, pull it back, and you can see it chambered the round just fine. Okay, no problem whatsoever. I'm going to drop this magazine out, make sure that I have the firearm unloaded. Again, safe direction. We are keeping it in the safe direction. I intentionally am pointing in this direction. This is part of my classroom. Uh, and this is the direction I will have students point theirs. Okay, and because uh, of the barriers, of the berm, everything that we have here. So, we can see we're clear, and we can see that we have that round. If you were to read the manual of any 1911, the first thing it will tell you, as I mentioned earlier, 500 rounds, get them broke in. There's a lot of people that do not like that with a lot of modern firearms. They think that that is a waste and you know that's debatable whatever it is. The 1911 is a very classic design. It is a shooter's gun in my opinion. It is one that is a very reliable gun for many models. I know there are some out there that are not very reliable uh, but this one is one that TSOS has a pretty good reputation. It is a company that has been around for quite some time. I know that there are uh, several people that may think it that is a new company, but they've been around since I believe the 90s, maybe even er earlier. Uh, if you guys know for sure, just let me know down in the comments below. Okay, this gun is one that I bought for a very specific purpose. Uh, one, I just love 1911s. And two, I just, I wanted it, love 1911s. So, anyways, now we're going to unload the hollow points from this and just show you how it will do with some full metal jackets. Just going to put these back in here. So just bear with me. I mainly wanted to show you this and talk a little bit about some of the criticisms that a lot of people have of 1911s. There's a lot of people that talk about how that they are just unreliable and things like that and they do not really understand a 1911. They do not understand how a 1911 is designed. They do not understand uh, some basic elements of a 1911 such as they need to be broken in. When the 1911 was originally designed, it was originally designed for this type of a bullet. The full metal jacket, round nose, bullet. Okay, That is what the gun was originally designed for. However, in the decades since, more and more people have been using these guns as a self-defense firearm and self-defense ammo technology has changed. So your hollow points, of course, is the newest form. It's typically what most people carry for self-defense. Again, the Metgar mag, the original Metgar mag, I'm going to insert it. Safe direction. Chambered the round, no problem whatsoever. Okay? Clear the weapon. Just like that. Okay? This is what the gun was designed originally to shoot, but after the, you get through the break me in period with most of them, they will cycle many defensive loads very easily. Now, something else that I wanted to do. 
talking about this magazine. I have here another Metgar magazine. Uh, again, I have several of these. I like the magazine. Some people don't. I do. And we have it loaded with the jacketed hollow points. Remington jacketed hollow points. Okay. Let's try to see how it does. Okay. This one chambered. Okay. This magazine chambered a jacketed hollow point into the gun. Okay. This magazine did not. It wants to struggle. Now I have, admittedly, I have had this magazine to chamber it a few times. With me messing with it and things like that, the gun will loosen up. Okay. Okay. Get that out of there. Set that aside. Put this one back in. Just like that. And let's try it again. Let's just take one jacketed hollow point round. Put back in. Let's try this magazine again. Okay. And we can see, first thing, nosedive. Okay, it stopped. Okay, it did not chamber that jacketed hollow point. Lock it open. You can see there, jacketed hollow point. This magazine, being a new magazine, just like the gun, it's something that's going to have to be ran for a bit. Uh, the more that spring is compressed and allowed to extend, the looser it's going to get. This magazine, just by feeling it, just by hand stripping the rounds out of this magazine, there is a lot more pressure in this magazine than what there is this one. Okay, this one comes out no problem. Big difference in pressure, how much force that it takes to strip that round out. Big difference. Okay, this one, a whole lot more pressure to get that round stripped out. New magazine, new gun. You put those two together, you have a recipe for what we saw just a minute ago when we're using some types of ammunition. It just can't get that round up into that chamber. However, I know that once this gun has been through the break-in period, that it will have no problem chambering those rounds from this magazine. So, that's one thing about the 1911s. You have got to break them in. All right. If you are going to use a defensive round ammunition in your 1911, you definitely need to break it in. Okay, that 500 round minimum is just as I'd say it is just a minimum. Okay, most guns don't necessarily take that long to break in. Okay, if you go back and you watch the video that I did on this one. Uh, I talk about that a little bit. I talk about how that with the factory magazine, another Metgar mag that came with my Rock Island, it would not feed jacketed hollow points early on. I'll try to leave a card up here in the corner to where you can go back and find that video. However, with a little bit better magazine, the Cobra mag from Trip Research, it would cycle them very early on, even before I got all of the breakup round count through. After I got the breakup round count through, it will cycle the jacket and hollow points just fine with one of the Metgar Max. Okay, but that's just a topic and a decision that each of you guys will have to make. Uh, you know, some of uh, the people out there do not like 1911s. I love 1911s. I have several of them. I love Glocks. I love Sig. Uh, I'm just a gunaholic. I admit it. I just love firearms. I love the shooting sports and. Uh, you know, that's just one of the things that I do, but that is also one of the reasons I wanted to make this video. Don't let someone tell you that a 1911 is a bad gun uh, based upon what they don't truly know uh, unless you've done the research, okay? Uh, again, guys, these are a good gun. Uh, they are a very reliable gun in most models. I'm not going to say that every manufacturer out there makes a great model 1911 but there are a lot out there that do. Some of these more budget friendly 1911s like this one here, a Rock Island. This one is a great value. This is a great 1911. Does it have all of the tremendous fit and finish of like a Kimber or Les Bear or anything like that? No, but if you would want a good 1911 at a reasonable price, either one of these two would fit that bill just fine. Great gun, love them. A little fun to shoot. I uh, look forward to getting this one broken in and 
spending some time at the range with it. Uh, that's what we're going to be doing in some upcoming videos, so be sure to subscribe and check those out. But guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. What are your thoughts on 1911s? Uh, be sure to leave that down below. Also, check out the links down in the description. Be sure to visit my website at boomsticktactical.com. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe, share the videos, and we will see you next time.